Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. We believe at Deep Adventure Ministries that the most radical thing you can do in life is abandon yourself to the wild adventure of God's will. God is wild. God, Don't try to control God. Uh, God is, uh, Jesus said, the Lord said, I am the, you are the clay, I am the potter. So let's get on his plan and let's get on his, on his, what his, uh, vision is for for us and for you individually and watch God work. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wasn Adventure. You know, when I was uh, in social studies class, it's the only thing I remember about social studies class. It was after lunch, super boring class, super boring teacher. But, and my mind drifted, but it really was almost like there was an epiphany moment in my life when suddenly as a junior in high school, I realized that I could be a father, that I could bring an eternal being into existence. And it changed everything for me. I worked three jobs to get through college. I said no to all of the, the partiers around me, and I just got serious about it because I got, if I'm going to have kids, i got to provide for them. And uh, I thought it's such an honor you know, to be a father. And I thought, you know, I was taught about God the Father, the, the, you know, the, the Holy Trinity. I thought, I guess, yeah, I guess God's kind of like a father. I guess that's probably true. I mean, I probably you know, paint him in that image because I kind of understand Father because I have a Father. But the reality is, is that God the Father is Father. And as a man, as a, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a reflection, I'm an icon in the sense of him. When I uh, have children and when I, when I raise my children, I act in, the, in that role of a father. God is Father. And Satan can't stand it. Satan hates that. And so there's this diabolical conspiracy uh, uh, in the spiritual uh, warfare of, of Satan trying to cut the legs out from underneath fathers, fatherhood, and patriarchy. And we've got as our guest someone he should probably not mess around with, Jesse Romero. Before we started, I wish you could have heard his prayer. We had a beautiful prayer asking Mary's intercession. And then we asked everybody that, <laughs> every saint you can imagine, for intercession. We're in good company with if they're praying for us. Jesse Romero. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Thanks, Bear. Thanks for having me on. I'd love to be on your show. Yeah, we love. We just love Jesse. Of course, everybody does. I bet you have a few people that kind of hate you, you know, because you don't you oh, don't pull any punches. Me. Oh, trust me, I've got I got my fair share of uh, of detractors. Yeah. You know, when I used to train, I know you train. I know you were a boxer, and I used to train in martial arts. And there was this one guy I used to spar with on Friday nights. He always gave me a going away present. You know how you're boxing, you're in tight, and then all of a sudden you kind of break. He would give me that going away punch. <laughs> I would fade away, and I kind of have a feeling you've probably you've probably dished a few of those out. I know very much that your that your um, your uh, ministry uh, part of that ministry is, is is a significant part of it is spiritual warfare, and so yeah. let's talk about this attack on patriarchy. Let's just get right into it. Okay. Well, Barry, you see what's happening around the country. There's a lot of cities that have been on fire, and this has already been, and I'm not talking about the fire of the Holy Spirit. I'm talking about the fire of anarchy, the fire of young thugs uh, from organizations like Black Lives Matter, Antifa, uh, in times past, Occupy Wall Street. We see what uh, anarchists are doing to the streets of uh, the United States when they disagree with something when they think that uh, something unjust was done by a police officer, they immediately take to the cities and they start destroying we anarchy. And in fact, many of these, organiz these anarchist organizations, when you read their websites and their own language on, on social media, you know what their big beef is? They wanna get, get rid of the patriarchal family and they want to get a get rid of law enforcement, which is civic patriarchy. So if you know, and you were and you're and you're a former policeman. Yeah, you're, I'm a retired LA cop. 
Correct. I mean, you've lived that life. You know the reality of all that. So here's what's interesting. And, and, and this is not a coincidence that you have the, the Marxist young people in these organizations that are trying to destroy patriarchy. Why? Because patriarchy comes from God. There are three institutions of patriarchy that God has given us to protect us, okay, and to guide us. First of all, let's, let's take it from the lowest form. You got the family, okay? So in the family, the man is the head, Ephesians 5.22. The man is the St. Joseph of the house. The man is the, the head of the house, which is what Christ is to the church, so the man has patriarchal authority in his house. The house is called the domestic church. The, 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 the father, husband, is the priest of the house. And once again, he has jurisdictional or juridical patriarchal authority over the wife and the children. In other words, he's the St. Joseph of the house, which means what? He's called to lead the family in this life to heaven he's called to protect the family physically and spiritually their soul as well and he's also called to uh, uh provide for the family physically and spiritually that's fatherly patriarchy let's move to the next rung of the ladder now you have spiritual patriarchy the devil is also attacking that big time and he's been attacking that We've known since 2002, since the sexual scandals erupted in the Catholic Church, they went mainstream. We had the whole, you know, Dallas document on the sexual scandals in 2002, uh, uh, basically that overseen by <clears throat> Theodore McCarrick, one of the worst violators. But God has given us spiritual patriarchs, popes, bishops, priests, deacons, for the spiritual protection of the church, the spiritual protection of the people of God, to give us the sacramental graces, to pray over us, to bless us. So, and, and, and that's being attacked by Satan. We, Our Lady of Good Success has told us the devil will go, out, go after the clergy. Uh, we have uh, Our Lady of La Salette, same thing. Our Lady of Akita, Japan. The devil in the 20th century will go after the clergy, and many of them will lose their faith. Now, now we have the third rung of the ladder. All these are institutions given to us by God. God has given us all these patriarchal institutions to protect us physically and spiritually. The last institution that God has given us patriarchally is civic patriarchy. That would be government. Government comes from God. You don't believe me? It's in Romans chapter 13. Read the whole chapter. Government comes from God. Now, I didn't say that every individual in government comes from God. I'm not saying Biden's election came from God. Not, not a chance. Or Nancy Pelosi. But the government institution comes from God. Our Lord even says in the Gospels, he says, Render to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Render to God what belongs to God. Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ recognized civic patriarchy. And for us, what does that mean? That means like the office of the president. That means judges, governors, mayors, on a more local level, law enforcement. That's civil patriarchy. That's civic patriarchy. The military. That's also a national patriarchy. These are institutions given to us by God to protect us. And notice, Bear, the, here's the point that I'm making. As a result of the three M's that are attacking the church in our Western civilization, the three M's, modernism, Marxism, and masonry, which all of them basically work in tandem. Modernism, Marxism, and masonry, what are they doing? Attacking the three institutions given to us by God to protect us. You know what you call when you kill a father? It's called patricide. And unfortunately, our society... Our society has been involved in patricide since the 1960s as a result of liberalism slash modernism, Marxism, and masonry. Okay. Uh, thank you, Jesse. We will invite you back some other time. No, that. <laughs> hey, Jesse, it's like you're, 
you, you speak at 100 miles an hour, gusting to 160 miles an hour. Hour. It's so funny, and then all of a sudden you stop. Have you ever have you ever fought someone like grappling, and you push on them and push on them, and then all of a sudden they pull you? That's what I just felt like. Like I was leaning against you, and you stopped talking. I just fell off the roof. <laughs> no, uh, it's true. There is this, and and it's di- when you say masonry, modernism, Marxism, it's diabolical. There's a spiritual warfare. There's an agenda behind all of that. Sometimes we get so focused on. The, the the political aspects and all that sort of thing that we don't see that up in the in the heavenly places there's a tremendous spiritual battle how do we how do we resp- you know and you're talking about saint joseph uh and and i and you know there's there is this definite attack against patriarchy i, I remember someone told me about 15 years ago we need to stop patriarchy and i go well, what do they mean by that and now it's 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 all over the front pages but jesus submits to his father, his heavenly father. Jesus submitted to his earth, earthly father. When when Joseph and Mary were married, um, Mary, of course, the greatest human being ever to live other than, you know, our, our Savior, um, the visions, uh, the angels stopped coming to Mary. They started to come to Joseph because he was the head of the household. And it says when, 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 when Jesus was at the temple and they thought he was lost, he said, didn't you know I'd be about my father's work? And, of course, he learned, he, he, he learned about his heavenly father's work, and he learned from his earthly father how to work too. But then it says he went home and he submitted to his parents and grew in stature before both man and God. So even Jesus understood the significant role of the patriarchy of, of his father, of his earthly father. What a— yeah. yeah. Yeah, that, that's right. And I think what well, we as Catholics, especially as men, look at, I can't change Washington. I, I've only got one vote. I can't change my governor. I can't change the senator. I only have one vote, like you have one vote. But what I can affect is the domestic church, the Romero household. Okay, and Jesse. Okay, is- Jesse. We got to take a break, and I wanted to get I wanted to get to the next subject. This is called a cliffhanger. In case you don't know what it is, folks, we're going to get right back with Jesse Romero. Talk about the domestic church. That's the key. That's the linchpin for the for the whole battle that's going on. Jesse, where can people find you? Everywhere, but be but specifically. <laughs> yeah, you can uh, you can look me up uh, uh, jesseromero.com if you want to invite me to the parish. jesseromero.com or buy my books, or if you want to listen to me. On social media, on on uh, on big on, on the tech platforms, go to vmpr.org, Virgin Most Powerful Radio.org, Virgin Most Powerful Radio.org. And Jesse, we're going surfing in a, in a little while. You're coming out to Hawaii. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. This is Daniel the Boone Markham with another episode of Country Up, Gitter. If you don't know it in your knower, you better get it in your getter, because if you haven't got it in your getter, you'll never know it. Yep, you heard that right. Information ain't understanding any more than understanding is wisdom. Knowing is just a nod of your head, but knowing something in your knower means you got understanding. But before the knowing, you got to get information into your getter. Your getter is a place where the information is caught, rather than see it as a flyby. Got it? Good. Having fun yet? I am. Folks today know boo information thanks to the internet, but it's mostly information without context. Regarding context, it can be likened to people saying they want socialism. I get wanting a lot of free stuff, but there ain't no free lunch, partner. Somebody paid for it or will pay for it. The chickens will come home to roost. Folks who lived through the Cold War and beyond got context to socialism, They saw how it eventually ruined everything it touched. Their context got them wise concerning politicians promising more and more free stuff. Jesus said a good tree cannot bear bad fruit and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Took time for the bitter fruit of socialism to ripen and be eaten. It always got to be a nasty tasting. So the story of the Mori is this. Get context to what you're reading and hearing. We need more folks with wisdom rather than a bunch of semi-automatic word slingers. King Solomon wrote, Wisdom will be life for you. Wisdom, not words, ensures your tree will produce good fruit. Take a bite and enjoy. This is Daniel the Boone Markham at countryup.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven.
Right. Hey man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. Mahalo for your kokua in supporting us. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to you, our listeners, for supporting the Bear Wozniak Adventure radio show at deepadventure.com. We would not be able to bring you our radio show with its uniquely powerful and gritty outreach without your help. You can become part of our pack. You can support our ministry by going to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak or by just going to deepadventure.com and clicking on the Patreon link and become a part of our outreach. That's deepadventure.com. Once again, mahalo for your kokua. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I just want to reach out to the mama bears out there. You know, there's nothing more furious, more uh, more dangerous than a mama bear. So we're not talking about the mama bears that are like uh, uh, the soft, cuddly ones. We're talking about those women that when, I, when Cindy and I go into mass, they're already there. They're by themselves. They're wearing a ring. They're praying the rosary. We're talking about the mama bears that, that you know, they, they, they want to bring their, the men in their lives, whether it's a son, a husband, a brother-in-law, a friend, they want those men to be, to grow, to come closer to the experience of God. And so we respect you and we love you. And we know you're the, your prayers are the power behind our ministry. So you can go to our website, deepadventure.com, become a mama bear and get one of our more roar in every poor mugs. But guess what, guys? Women, I should say. Someone gave us these teddy bears, Jesse. Wow. Uh, and it's Catholic biker teddy bears. So if you're a mama bear and you join, not only get the coffee <laughs> mug, you get you get one of these while we have them. But, uh, you know, Je- Jesse, we've been talking about uh, uh, the key. The key is, is the domestic church. You know, when Nehemiah came back... Uh, to Jerusalem, and he challenged the men there. Why, why you let the, why do you let the temple walls fall down? It was under your charge, and you let them fall down. The breach in the wall goes right through our living rooms. That's where the breach in the wall is. But the way he challenged the men was to rebuild the church. Was if you if you look at it, it's almost kind of boring reading. It says it gives the name of a real weird name, a Hebrew name, and it says, and this man and his family rebuilt the wall from here to here, and this man and his family rebuilt the wall from here to here, and it lifts off all these men and their families in that circular rotation, the domestic church that stood up, said, we're going to be counted as for me and my household, as Joshua said, we will serve the Lord, and they rebuilt the walls. Talk about, talk about the, the power of the domestic church. Yeah, absolutely, and by the way, that's... Uh the church teaches us that that spouses, you know, the, the parents, by the by the very nature of the sacrament of baptism, which makes us priests, prophets, and kings, subordinate to Christ, it, 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 that means that we have a priestly authority and a priestly power, which is primarily exercised in the domestic church. That that's a term used in the catechism in paragraph sixteen fifty six. 26 and paragraph 2685 the catholic family is called the domestic church mom and dad have priestly authority in the domestic church now between mom and dad there's a reciprocity husbands and wives help sanctify one another and they care for one another and love one another uh, forgive one another, be patient. For, so within the context of marriage, we're helping us become holy, mom and dad. 
And again, and St. Paul specifically gives guidelines in Ephesians 5 that, again, the husbands must love their wives as Christ loves the church. That's a that big means, order, man. That's a tall order. Agape, which means sacrificial love, which means you're willing to lay down your life for your wife. That's a, you're willing, you, in other words, you live your life in imitation of Christ. So a husband is called to the vocation of sacrifice, the sacrifice of his life and his children. Why? So that his wife and kids might become holy, or as St. Paul says, and without blemish or stain. And so mom and dad together, we're the ones that are primarily responsible for the sanctification of our children. Okay? And, and, and natural law and divine positive law gives us the power to pray for our children, pray over our children, pray healing prayers for our children, pray deliverance prayer for our children, bless our children, lay hands on our children, uh, bless them with holy water, drive out evil spirits from a home. These are all powers given to mom and dad based on natural law and divine positive law. And so within the context of marriage also, we're making each other holy. The sacrament of marriage, you confer grace upon each other, and we're making each other holy. Here's, here's the, the difficulty. When a man doesn't want to be the St. Joseph of the house, here's a picture I want to think about a bodyguard, you know, at, at, at some, you know, some club or something, okay? Bodyguard stands there, and he makes sure that no drunks or no bad guys are coming into this club tonight, all right? Bodyguard. Um, and people know they said, no, 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 you're under the influence. Get out of here. I'm going to call the cops. No, 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 you're not, uh, uh, you know, you, you can't come in with that, you know, uh, eight inch dagger in your waist. Get out of here. You... So a bodyguard is paid to protect bad people from going inside to the establishment. That's what a Catholic man is. The Catholic man is the bodyguard of the house. This is St. Joseph of the house. St. Joseph's job, one of his jobs was to protect. We know that because angels were sent to him, said, King Herod wants to kill your baby boy. Take your wife and the baby and run, flee to Egypt. So it was his call. The angel didn't go to Our Lady, went to Joseph. Why? Headship. And he says, we got to go because, and, and, and she wasn't like, you know, who are you to tell me what to do and stuff? You know what? Uh, you know, we're, we're like 50-50 here, you know? Isn't this a 50-50 deal? And like, you know, how, how dare you? You know, uh, I'm a liberated woman. No. She understood Ephesians 5, 21 to 31. Wives, surrender or submit yourselves to your husband. She understood that. She lived it perfectly. Look at her life in the New Testament. She always submitted and surrendered to the patriarchal authority of St. Joseph. That's the perfect uh, dynamic for, for, for a perfect Christian marriage. Okay? Now, here, a lot of women get hung up and that's why even a lot of priests don't like to preach this in the homilies and deacons. They like run away from it. Ephesians 5, 21, 31, where it says, wives, submit yourself or surrender yourselves to your husband. They say, oh, no, I can't mention that. It's, it, it's, it's, not, it's not that difficult. The word submit or in some translations surrender, wives, surrender yourselves to your husband. It's actually a beautiful term. The ter it's a Greek term. It's a military term, first of all. And the Greek term that was used by St. Paul is hupotasso, hupotasso, which means you rank under. In other words, it's a military term which indicates that the Catholic family is the church militant in micro. And the Catholic family being the church militant in micro, the man is the general, he's Patton, and the woman, hupotasso, the Greek word, means it's a, it means it's a military room term. She ranks under him in the mission. There can only be one general. And then you have this, the, 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 the succeeding officers. So that word means to rank under the man, which means this. The word hupotasso also means that you're called to aid 
and help and assist in the mission. So what's the mission of the men? Ephesians 5, 21 to 31. What's the mission? To get the family to heaven. He's the general. His primary job on planet Earth is to get the men to heaven. The wife's job is a subordinate role. She's supposed to hupotasso, surrender to the general's patriarchal authority and help him, assist him in getting himself, herself, and the kids to heaven. It's actually a beautiful term. It takes power. It takes it's a, a powerful person to do that. Term. It takes it's a powerful it takes a powerful person, Jesse, to do that. You, you know, I was thinking about the, the, the centurion. The one that Jesus said had more faith than anyone. He said to Jesus, Come heal my ser- will you heal my servant? And Jesus said, Okay, I'll come with you. And then he said, No, it's not necessary. And these were his words, speaking of this military terminology. For I am a man under authority. And I have servants under me, or men under me. He was a centurion. He was in charge of 100 men. And I say to one, go, and he goes. Another one, do this, and he does it. So it's, it's not necessary that you come to my house. Just speak the word, and my servant will be healed. We hear that every time we go to Mass. There's a certain powerful understanding that he had. If he wants the people, his centurions, to obey him, he needs also to be under authority. And so the role of the woman is, and Jesus said about this man, I haven't seen such great faith in all of Israel because he understood the concept of patriarchy. He was a man under authority. His wife understood that too, or his men understood that too, and they submitted to it. So for women, you know, my wife Cindy, let me give you an example of a woman that has a, has a, a way, a really a powerful influence on a man. When we, when we go to ha- uh, have, have coffee in the morning, we do our liturgy of the hour, and the, she she gets the coffee and I and I kind of get ready. If we if if we if we have a if we're gonna eat dinner or we're gonna have breakfast or wherever we are at the house or out to eat, and and I start eating, she waits. She won't eat at all. And then finally I go, oh Cindy, why aren't you eating? We didn't pray. So she 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 has this influence, but she does it in a way that opens the door for me to be the St. Joseph. Because honestly, what I want you to talk about next when we come back is men have abdicated their role, and that leaves women defenseless, and they don't know what to do. So we'll be right back. We're going to talk with Jesse Romero. He's going to talk to the to uh, to the men out there and to the mama bears out there. We'll be, we be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. This is Bear Wozniak with the Deep Adventure Moment coming to you from my home in Waikiki Beach. People here in Hawaii, we say aloha and people think aloha means hello and aloha means goodbye, but actually aloha means to give breath. If you're here in the islands and you're not from Hawaii, they say you're a haole. Haole means to have no breath. When Captain Cook came, he shook the hands of the islanders, the first non-Hawaiian they'd ever seen. In Hawaii, though, we know we bend our head foreheads together and we nose breathe and we share breath. And so we say aloha. We share breath, the breath of life with each other. You remember what Jesus said? My peace I give you. My peace I leave with you. And he breathed his Holy Spirit. Can you imagine? He breathed his breath and he said, receive the Holy Spirit. Let the breath of God aloha you. How do you do that? You have to get quiet. You have to get still. It can't be. Elijah, remember in his cave, he heard the big wind, the lightning, boulders crashing. But Jesus came to him. God came to him. The Holy Spirit came to him in the stillness and in the quietness. Learn to be still. Learn to be quiet. For me, I have ADHD to the max, as we say in Hawaii. For me to be still is actually to paddle on my stand-up paddleboard or take a long walk on the beach. But when I do that, I pray. When I'm on my paddleboard, uh, I'm praying the rosary. When I'm walking along the beach, I may be listening to sacred, a sacred book or the, doing the Liturgy of the Hours. But learn to be still. Let the breath of the Holy Spirit 
Aloha you. This is Bear Wozniak from DeepAdventure.com. Aloha. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Men. Yes, we mean you. Go to deepadventure.com and check out Bear's Man Cave, a men's only Facebook group. Join the pack with other men as they challenge and inspire one another to manly virtue. Plus, you can dialogue with us in our regular video chat meetups. Plus, get your exclusive content. Join at deepadventure.com. That's deepadventure.com. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to challenge the men out there to go to deepadventure.com. And join Bear's Man Cave. We're a group of men. It's a secret Facebook group. We post um, our challenges. We, we, we post inspirations. We post ask for prayers. Uh, twice, a, twice a month, we all get together, the Zoom video chat, and we challenge and encourage uh, each other. We always think of ourselves as the men in the cave of Adullam, where David gathered his band of misfits, and uh, all these men who were just kind of didn't fit in anywhere, didn't know where to be. They were outlaws, or they were running from debt they owed or something, and God formed them in that cave, and they formed each other to become the mighty men of valor. So we invite you to go to deepadventure.com and join uh, Bear's Man Cave. So, Jesse, I don't want to skip ahead on what you were saying, but the question is, where the rubber meets the road is, you've got a man, uh, he has his role as priest of the household, what and yet he, so many men have just abdicated. When I when I go to Jesse, I was speaking to a group of young adults the other day on Zoom, and there were like maybe fifty of them, and there were maybe three, four, five percent of the women or ten percent of the women had their videos on, and a, just a couple of the men. And I, I said said to the men, if you're on video, you know we're on Zoom, turn on your Everyone turn on your cameras so we can have a dialogue with each other. And the women were respectful, and they began to turn on the, cam the cameras, and the men didn't. And I finally said, if you guys are so passive that you can't turn on your cameras, then just leave the, the chat. I don't want to talk with you. And uh, more and more and more and more of the men turned their mom. And the, and the women there, though, were saying, and so I said, okay, now we got your attention. Women, what do you want to say to the passive men around you? And they said, these are single women. They, they don't date us. They hang around us. If they do date us, they don't ask us to marry. And we don't see, we don't see men of virtue who are willing to. They want, we want the traditional man. We want a man who knows what he wants, takes charge, and will protect us and provide us and has a vision for our future. And we've had conversations among each other. Should we just settle? Because it's kind of like that song, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? Can you talk about that dynamic where the men are, are like neutered and the women what what do they what's their response to it that's a tough question that's the question yeah the, the, the this is it see the devil understands he knows the laws of god because the, the the devil is a lawyer from hell he knows natural law he knows divine positive law and he knows that the man has spiritual patriarchal authority priestly authority a man's a man's faith and prayers are very powerful in fact as it says uh in the book of exodus chapter 20 and i think exodus chapter 32 that uh, the blessing of a father extends to the thousandth generation. Get that. The and so th mm. that that's how powerful the faith and prayers of patriarchy are. They flow down to the thousandth generation. That's what the Bible, the devil knows that. And so that, how does grace flow into the family? So to answer your question, God, the Trinity pours his grace down upon the mediatrix of all graces, the Blessed Virgin Mary, who dispenses the graces to the human race. How? 
through patriarchy, through the priest or through the husband at home. The grace of the Trinity through the Lady, Our Lady of Mediatrix of all graces flows down into the family through patriarchy. That's what it says in Exodus chapter 20 and, and Exodus chapter uh, 32. It's right in the Bible. It flows down from the man to the thousandth generation. And so the devil knows that. So he wants to stop the flow of grace. It's like when you're using the water hose outside and the water hose has a kink. The devil wants to kink the faith of the man so that water doesn't flow because the water flows called grace from the man through the family, from God through the man through the family. So he wants to kink the man's faith. How does he do it? Several weapons, lukewarmness, lukewarmness. Uh. Okay. It's it's. I wish you were hot or cold, but I'll vomit you out of your mouth if you. There's nothing more disgusting than a lukewarm Christian. And the, and the way he makes us lukewarm, Barrett, is he makes us lukewarm by he makes us in love with the things of the world. That's why Saint James mm. in uh, James chapter three says, uh, to to, uh, it, to be in love with the world is to be at enmity with God. So what the devil wants to do to the man, because he knows that grace flows to the man to the rest of the family, if he can make the man so worldly that the man just loves creature comforts, uh, the man just basically has given over with St. John the Apostle in 1 John chapter 2, verse 15, says, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. By making a man love the world and the things of the world more than God, He's kinked the hose now. Now the grace of God is not flowing into the family. Guess what? Now the bouncer has gone. There's no bouncer at the front door. The door's wide open at night for, uh, you know, for any burglar or thief that wants to come in. And this is how demons, how they operate. They kink the hose, the faith of the man, by worldliness. The man falls into this temptation because, again, the theology of temptation is this. St. Archbishop Fulton Sheen says the demons will tempt, and then it becomes a delight to our eyes, a delight to our senses, number two, and then we fall into consent. Boom. You're stuck in sin. That's Adam and Eve. That's the whole That's the story yeah, of Adam and yeah, Eve. Here's the theology of temptation, Archbishop right. Fulton Sheen. To temptation projected at your five senses. Do you take delight in the temptation or do you avert your gaze and take custody of your intellect, custody of your eyes? Oh, if you delight in the temptation, then you move to the third phase. Now you consent to the temptation. And then it, this is the way the demon, this is the way the demon then takes it, out all day long. Okay, that's the next step because you consent to it. Once you've given Satan legal permission, um, then it becomes demonic, and you're you're oppressed, maybe possessed. You've, you've given yourself over to that, whatever that is, whether it's uh, greed, wanting power, uh, sex, big thing, pornography, um, whatever it is. When you give yourself over to that, guess what? Satan has permission now to dominate your life, and cry, right. and the hearts of many will grow cold. Absolutely, and uh, and and this is exactly why. Uh, when, when, when a man is taken out, uh, the family's unprotected. The wife is unprotected. The kids are unprotected. And now they're open to what's called diabolical retaliation. And this is, the devil doesn't change his strategy because that same strategy has been working since the Garden of Eden. What happened in the Garden of Eden? Adam, God's firstborn. Eve, God's firstborn daughter. Adam has patriarchal authority. He's called to basically, uh, he's called to, to the, the Garden of Eden is his household. That's his sanctuary. Everything is under his dominion. Eve is made for him to be his helpmate. Notice the, the word is helpmate. Not, 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 you know, not slave like Islam. When they look at women as slaves, but also not, not as a, uh, you know, speaker of the house either, or vice president, okay, you know, like lording over men. No, the Hebrew word that's used, Eve is called to be Adam's helpmate, which in Hebrew, Ezer Kenegdo, 
That's another military term. So two military terms are used for women. That word means, once again, to help the man in the mission. To help the man in the mission. What's the mission of Adam? Well, again, he's the father of the human race. He's, he's the priest of the home, and he's called to guard the garden and till the garden and protect his wife. A talking snake comes over here, and Eve goes and confronts the talking snake. Adam should have said, honey, where are you going? Oh, somebody's knocking at the door. It's the talking snake. I'm going to go talk to him. No, you're not. No, you're not. I'm, I've got authority here. Right. I don't know who this talking snake is. This could be dangerous. Step back, honey. Let me confront this dangerous situation. Let me confront this intruder because I've got priestly authority over this house. Right. People want to blame me... Eve. Yeah. Adam, <laughs> Adam no, wasn't there. Where was Adam? Why didn't he Adam, defend her? Adam was guilty. Exorcists use the term. Adam was guilty of the, of the sin of dereliction. Dereliction of duty. Because mm. it's his duty, his obligation to protect Eve. He was derelict <coughs> in his duty. Now, what's the sin of Eve? Eve is being the alpha woman. She's being the radical feminist, pounding her chest, saying, I am woman, watch me roar. You know, honey, step back. Get behind my dress. Let me go talk to this talking snake. And I'll go dispatch him real quick. Okay? What exorcists use the term, what was Eve guilty of? She was guilty of the sin of usurpation. Yep. Usurpation, which means she's stepping out of her lane of authority. Okay. She's outside her lane. Let's talk about that when we come back from this break. Jesse, we're gonna have to have. I know you're a busy person. We're gonna have to have you back because uh, we got only one more segment left with you. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Jesse, where can people find you? Because I know you're out uh, doing parish missions and things. I thought soon you'll be here in Hawaii. Yeah, uh, I'll be in Hawaii. I think in two. You're months. back on the road. I'm back on the road. Yeah, I'm getting. Uh, uh, I've been busy the last. Uh, I say the last six months. Well, I've where can they find you? JesseRomero.com. JesseRomero.com. Or you can go on. Uh, you can go on social media and, and you can hear me doing uh, two hours a day live uh, podcasting. It's called Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Virgin Most Powerful Radio. We are, we're on all the platforms except YouTube. YouTube just gave us a lifetime ban as of yesterday. Yeah, we so want to talk. Oh, right okay. Well, we're going to. Okay. Lifetime ban. Yeah. All right. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Hey, man. I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link, or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Mahalo for your kokua in supporting us. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to you, our listeners, for supporting the Bear Wozniak adventure radio show at deepadventure.com. We would not be able to bring you our radio show with its uniquely powerful and gritty outreach Without your help, you can become part of our pack. You can support our ministry by going to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak or by just going to deepadventure.com and clicking on the Patreon link and become a part of our outreach. That's deepadventure.com. Once again, mahalo for your kokua. This is a warning. 
The Bear Wozniak adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Our guest today is Jesse Romero. You know, um, if you want to be blessed by the Lord, uh, get under the spot where the blessings come out. And that means this, if you're under authority, which all of us to some degree or, or, not, or in some way or other are, if you, if you remain under that authority, that's where the blessings flow. Stay, stay under the spot where the blessings go out. The man, in, in, we're talking about the domestic church here with Jesse Romero, think of him like an umbrella. If you're getting rained on, as opposed to being blessed, you know, by a river of grace, if you're getting rained on and there's thunder and lightning in your life, check yourself out and say, hey, am I under authority? Now, if you are under authority and you're trying to be responsive to authority in your life, and that authority is is dere in dereliction of duty, as Jesse would say, as, as our, our exorcists say, then your role is the role of influence. Your role is to go to battle in prayer. And to and and to and to, and to ask God to 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 intervene, but remain under the umbrella of protection. Don't don't uh, stay under the blessing blessings where the, the blessings flow through the patriarchy, and don't get don't step outside where the lightning and the rain on. If you're getting rained on, there's there's two reasons: either you've stepped out, or the person above you is derelict, and there's a, there's holes in the umbrella. But it's say it's safer to stay there and then to pray for to pray for intercession. We're talking with Jesse Jesse Romero ab about the, this this whole area, the fact that the diabolical arena that that takes place when the man is derelict and the woman usurps. Yeah, uh, and and in fact, you could even see that the New Testament develops this because in the New Testament, when they talk about the Adam and Eve story, you know who gets blamed for. For Eve eating the apple in in uh, in disobedience to God and by listening to the talking snake, in the New Testament, in Romans five fourteen, and in First Corinthians fifteen twenty two, Saint Paul says, "It was Adam's fault. Adam's to blame." Wait a minute, Adam didn't talk to the snake. It was Eve, and Eve is the one that ate from the forbidden fruit. Who gets blamed in the New Testament? Adam. Why? Because theologically, he's the one that has the priestly patriarchal authority, and he's the one that should have intervened, and he didn't. And this is why, again, even St. Peter, developing this whole theme of patriarchy in 1 Peter 3, 7, he says, Likewise, you husbands, live considerately with your wives, bestowing honor on the women as the weaker sex. Since you are joint heirs of the grace of life, in order that your prayers may not be hindered. So notice, a man's prayers are powerful, but they can be hindered. If you, if you treat your wife like a second-class citizen, your prayers will not be heard by God. A man is called to exercise the virtues of, sub-virtues of courage. We see that in little David facing Goliath okay the sub virtue of courage that, that's that quality of spirit that enables you to face danger a man is also called to have the sub virtue of it's called chivalry we see that in little David against Goliath chivalry means it means uh, bravery it means uh, skill it, it, it means uh, uh, generosity and victory and it also means piety and courtesy towards women so a man's role is to lead his wife, and that's a God-ordained role. It's, and, and it's a role that has patriarchal authority. It's not a master-slave relationship. If you want to see the Catholic understanding, it's the St. Joseph Blessed Virgin Mary relationship. That's our model. The St. Joseph Blessed Virgin Mary relationship. It's a, it's, it's a man's job, primarily, once again. Uh, in fact, 
St. Timothy talks about, Paul talks about that to Timothy in 1 Timothy 5, 8. He says, and whoever does not provide for relatives and especially family members has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. This is why, bear on judgment day, on judgment day, men are going to have much more to answer to God than women and, 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 and people if they die as children or teenagers. Because the husband at the particular judgment will stand before the throne of Christ. He's going to have to render an account for himself, his wife, and his kids. The wife will only have to render an account for herself, not her husband. The kids will render an account for themselves. The husband will render an account on judgment day for everybody. Because he was the one that was tasked with the job of getting everybody to heaven. And again... And when you look at salvation history, God always saves through patriarchy. This is the whole, the whole uh, story of salvation history. A couple of examples. When God went to set out to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, the, the two wicked cities that were involved in, 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 uh, in the, the act of sodomy, that's why it's called Sodom and Gomorrah. Well, who was pleading to God to spare them? It was Abraham. Abraham was a righteous patriarch. He was pleading to God, and, and God took his pleas into account. Now, m move on. Another page. But, 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 look at, but, but look at Lot, dude. So what was Lot doing living in that, in that, in that city? He should, have, he should have been long gone seeing what was going on in that city. And, he did, and Lot did eventually Eventually leave. he did, but his wife, yeah. by that time his wife had, she looked he back. He told his wife, we got to look, we got to go, honey, and don't look back. He had patriarchal authority. His wife didn't listen to him. She looked back. He says, we've got to flee. Don't look. God says we can't look back. Lot's wife looked back, and she became a pillar of salt. Why? She disobeyed patriarchal but, authority but, Lot. But let's talk about Lot, though. Lot had sown the seeds of distrust in that in the, in his family and in his, in his wife if he was living in that city for that long and hadn't left we w without you know angels coming to intervene he had dropped the ball too so i mean we could point at her she did look oh. back but i you know when you when you've sown the seeds of distrust and and, and you're not a trust you know it, it's it comes back to the man he needs to he needs to fulfill his mission, fulfill his role, fulfill his purpose, because he's been given. It's not like God's given you something that you can't do. He's given you the grace, the power, and the natural ability to Correct. do that, and the instinct to be heroic. Yeah. Lot, Lot is not an example that I would use as somebody uh, of, of faithful <laughs> patriarchy, so that's that's yeah. not my example. I'm not even using him. No, okay? I, I know. I know. I'm just, yeah. I was just yeah. taking that, no, that thread I mean, one further. I'm, I'm using Abraham as a faithful example Amen. of faithful patriarchy. Another example of faithful patriarchy, Noah. The Bible says that at the time of Noah, the, the world was wicked. Noah built an ark. He said, take your family members and, and a pair of every animals into the ark. The Bible says that Noah was righteous. The Bible says Abraham was righteous. It uses that word exactly. Well, when the, when the flood came, who was saved? Noah and his eight family members alone. Everybody else died. Why? God saves people through faithful patriarchy. Amen. That's the story of the Bible. I'll give you one more. Amen, Jesse. A Roman soldier uh, in the book of Acts, he's uh, Paul and Silas start, pra start praising God. The, 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 the doors of all the cells burst open. The jailer is saying, oh, no, uh, uh, the, the, you know, the governor is going to kill me. All the prisoners have been released. They've broken out of jail. So the governor, it doesn't say that he has a sword in his stomach, but the tradition tells us he's going to kill himself. He's going to do a hairy carry. He, St. Paul confronts him. The Roman soldier with the soldier ready to pierce himself says, uh, Sir, what must I do to be saved? And St. Paul says, look what St. Paul says to the Roman soldier. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you and your family shall be saved. Notice. The Bible clearly shows us Abraham, Noah, Amen. the Roman soldier. Amen. God saves the family through the faithful patriarch because why? It's the faithful patriarch, his faith and prayers merit the grace of salvation for the entire family. 
pulls down, brings down the, the grace of salvation to the whole family so that they're saved. That's called that's called meriting the grace of salvation for your family. That's the role of a Catholic man. That's how the that's how the offspring are saved. Well, Jesse, we gotta we gotta go, but I want one of the things that we've focused on here is we keep saying, well, what does the woman do in that situation? Uh, you know, but but your your solution was to keep coming back and hammering the men. <laughs> and that's the solution. We can talk about the women. Maybe next no. month we'll do a whole thing just on the women, a whole hour on the yeah. women. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. But I mean, it's got to start with men uh, step up. And, and and let me tell you where where you start, men. If you've been uh, derelict in your duty, go to confession. Get let the Lord get, give you a good scrub. You probably need it. And then uh, write down your mission statement what is my mission what is my purpose write down each member of your family what is god doing in their lives and how can you help that happen but jesse we got to run we're out of time uh this is the bear wozniak adventure jesse romero uh, dot com if you want to find jesse and uh deepadventure.com if you want to find us until next week you know jesse uh we sign off by saying may the breath of the holy spirit aloha you but i think with you we'll sign off with viva cristo rey can we do that together Viva, Viva Cristo, Cristo Rey. Rey. Amen. Viva. I love that. I love that. The cry of the Cristeros. Hey, man. I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out.